Hey, hi, today we'll do a small demonstration of ACI and I integration, which will provide an end to end segmentation from the campus right up to the data center. At the data center with ACI, we know we can do segmentation as well as micro segmentation using EPGs and micro EPGs. On the campus side, a similar level of segmentation can be achieved using our trusted architecture. That is with the use of SGTs, which extracts a user identity from his IP address, VLAN subnets, etc., which are earlier primarily used for segmentation. Now with this integration, we can map the campus security groups to the endpoint groups in ACI at the data center. This integration is possible with IS 2.1 and above. The integration will be available in two phases. Phase one is policy plane integration and is available today, which I'll be demonstrating in this video. The phase two integration involves data plane level integration, which will come in the future releases. So that's the background. So let's jump right into the demo now. So attach is the topology that we'll be using for this demonstration. Uh, to save time, I have pre-configured certain configurations. And in this video, I'll be focusing only on the integration piece. So uh, here we have an ACI fabric and we'll be using tenant trustsec for the integration. This tenant has two EPGs, namely infra and web server EPGs, and both are belonging to the same bridge domain. That is, they are part of the same subnet, but they are in different EPGs. We also have an L3 out defined from this tenant, which connects to the campus network. The campus network consists of 3650 switches, which are already configured for .1x and CTS, and I've configured ICE as the radius server. I've also configured ICE with some basic policies and also integrated the ICE with AD. So let me just quickly show you the configurations on the APIC. So here's the configuration on the on the APIC. As I said, we'll be working on the TrustSec tenant. It has two APGs, infra and web server. The tenant also has an L3 out defined, which is connecting to the campus network. Within this L3 out, I have defined just a single external EPG and uh, known as campus underscore net and identified networks that is 192.168.10.0 and 30.0 as part of it. So let me also quickly show you the ICE configurations as well. The access switch is configured as a network device. Also, I have defined some security groups in ICE, so let's quickly check that out. Uh, so these are the security groups I've defined. So group <coughs> admin, which has a security group tag of three. Another group called group non-admin, which has a security group tag of four. And some other security group tags like local servers and network devices with a tag of five and two. So let's just look at us one of the security groups. And when you look at it, you'll find that they have been enabled for propagation to ACI. What this means is when we have an integration, this information will be passed on to ACI. I've also defined policies in ICE, which is actually looking for any wired Ethernet connection and authenticating using .1x. So if you see, if the user is part of a certain group, that is an admin group, as ICE assigns him into group admin with a tag of three. Uh, if he's a regular user, ICE assigns, assigns him to a non-admin group with a tag of four. And also we have for machine authentication an unknown tag. So with that, let's begin with our integration. So the first thing that we do uh, within, for the integration is to import the ACI certificate as a trusted certificate in device. Um, so I've already downloaded the ACI certificate. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and import the same uh, into the trusted certificate store. So once the certificate is imported, we can add ACI into ICE. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm using a beta version of ICE, which is ICE 2.2. And hence you can see that there are two options, namely policy plane and data plane integration. However, in this video, we'll be focusing only on the policy plane integration, which is also available with ICE 2.1. The data level plane integration we'll be seeing in future releases. So let's fill in the necessary details and test the connections. So let me just quickly do that. So let's quickly check the connections. So 
so yeah the connection is successful so let's go ahead and enable the ACI ice exchange uh, which means that uh, both these uh, components that is ice and the ACI will exchange security groups and EPG information between each other uh, let's go ahead and save it I've also uh, put some suffixes so that we identify that these groups are created from ice uh, or from when we look into the ACI and when we look at the ice we have a suffix of EPG so that we know that these are learned from ACI so let's go ahead and save and we'll be able to see the exchange of information between the systems let's give it a minute So let's look at ACI and see how ICE security groups gets populated as external EPG groups. You will be able to see that uh, those ICE security groups are populated one by one as external EPG groups in ACI. So let's give it a minute so that everything gets populated. As you can see, after the integration, ICE makes an API call and configures ACI with these EPGs. Note that the sub subnet information in all these EPGs is empty, which will be populated once ICE identifies a device as part of the security group, as part of an authentication that happens. Now, since we have a successful communication between the two systems, we can define policies for communications as required. So, this can be achieve actually achieved using two methods, right? Uh, first by using contracts within ACI and second using SGHLs on the switch itself that is the access switch so let's first look at doing this with contracts in ACI so for this let's create two contracts one contract which allows all communication between the external group admin to both the infra and the server EPGs so let me do that Now let's create another contract between a non-admin group to the EPGs, but this time let's allow only HTTP connection between them. So I'll be using a pre-built contract that I've already defined. So before checking this connection, let me also show you that ICE learns the endpoints as well which are which were actually the endpoints connected to ACI and we can see that it has actually learned both the endpoints uh, which are basically the servers in the EPG uh, let's quickly check on the ACI side that whether these are visible as endpoints on the on the EPGs yeah. you can see that so let's uh, go ahead and, and do a check for uh, the proper communications based on the contracts that we have defined. So I have a PC. Uh, it's basically a Windows 7 PC connected to port 1 slash 0 slash 48 on the access switch. And it is configured for .1x authentication. So let's uh, log in to the Windows machine using an account uh, which is part of an admin group. So I'll use user 1 which, uh, which, is, which is part of the admin group. As you can see, uh, ICE has identified the user as as part of the admin group and assigned him to a group called admin, uh, which means that he is essentially being tagged as SGT3. Uh, this endpoint information will be propagated to ACI and is visible as a network under group admin EPG. So let's check that. And you can see that this IP address gets populated in the external EPG information. And now since we had a full permission from this EPG to the EPGs that resided inside ACI, let's try to bring the servers connected to ACI. And yes, the pings are successful. That means we have successful communication between those external EPGs and internal EPGs. So let me quickly do, let, what, uh, let's me lo let me log off and log in as a non-admin user. Uh, this time I'll be using user 3, which is basically a part of non-admin user in the AD. <coughs> so 
So this time I assigns the user to a non-admin group. And you can see that due to the integration we have, this information propagates to ACI and the same IP address that you actually saw as part of the uh, group admin EPG has now moved to a group non-admin EPG. And this was all automatically propagated from the information that ICE got as part of the login process and it has been communicated back to ACI because of this integration. So let's go ahead and quickly do a connectivity check as well. Um, as you remember, we had allowed only HTTP traffic, so the ping should fail. So let's quickly check that. And it seems to be failing. Uh, let's also do a test if you're able to connect to the servers over HTTP connection. So we open Internet Explorer and let's do a connection to one of the servers. And yes, we see a successful communication. Uh, thus, we can see that with this integration, we are successfully able to provide an end-to-end -end segmentation right from the campus till up to the data center. Now, since I had already told you that there are two ways to uh, do communications uh, uh, or restrict communications or allow communications as per your needs, uh, the second one being using SGACLs on the switch itself, uh, which, will enforce the, which will enforce the policy close to the source of the traffic. So let me demonstrate that. Uh, to save time, uh, I've already defined the SGACL matrix and you can see this here. Um, and you can see it is it is pretty much the same as we did in ACI. What I have done is we have given full permission from group admin to servers, while only HTTP access from group non-admin to the servers, uh, which are actually residing in ACI. So let's uh, quickly enable the enforcement of these SGACL policies on the switch and check. CTS, enforcement, CTS, enforcement on the VLANs. So again, let's try logging on as an admin user. And see if you are able to ping both the servers. And yes, we are able to successfully see that we are able to have a successful communication, ping communication between the servers, which means the communication is intact and in whatever communication we actually define on the SGACL. And let's also see whether the SGACL has been successfully downloaded on the switch. So we'll do the show CTS role based permissions from SGT value of three. And yes, you can see that it has a permit IP any as a SGHL that has downloaded. So now let's go ahead and do a non-admin user login and see how it, whether it behaves the same way as it behaved when, when we did the contracts in ACI. So I've logged in as a non-admin user and let me see if I'm able to ping the servers and the server to the and the ping to the servers are failing. Let me quickly check whether I'm able to do an HTTP to the server. And yes, we are able to successfully do HTTP communication. That means our SGACLs are working fine and we are able to restrict the traffic very close to the source. Let's also quickly check the SGACL that has been downloaded on the switch. So let's just quickly say, show CTS role based permissions from this time four, which was the tag associated with non-admin user. And you can see that it is only allowing web traffic, which was the SGACL we had defined. And that's it. And that concludes the video of, uh, of ICE in ACI integration.